Scotland's role as hosts of the UN COP26 Climate Summit next year presents a clear opportunity to demonstrate Scotland's climate leadership to the rest of the world. Scotland's greenhouse gas emissions fell by nearly a third over the last decade, faster than any other nation of the UK or any G20 nation. The Scottish Parliament voted unanimously to commit Scotland to net zero emissions by 2045, and the Scottish Government has taken important steps to embed net zero as core government policy. However, emissions reductions have been heavily weighted to action in the power sector. Aviation and surface transport emissions have increased. Scotland missed its emissions target in 2018. Transport is Scotland's biggest emitting sector, responsible for 37% of greenhouse gas emissions the only sector to have seen an increase. The Scottish Government has responded with an ambitious programme for government that puts sustainable transport at the heart of decision making. However, the scale of the challenge is immense. All key indicators are pointing in the wrong direction. Trips by car and by van are rising. Single occupancy trips are on the increase. Over the last decade, bus patronage has declined by 20%. Public transport has been further massively hit by COVID-19. In embracing sustainable transport, the Scottish Government has demonstrated real leadership. The National Transport Strategy 2 marks a clear break with the past. It recognises that an efficient, sustainable transport system is vital, not only for tackling climate change, but also for increasing productivity, reducing inequality, and improving health and well-being, The Scottish Government has committed significant funding to bus and active travel infrastructure, is implementing low emission zones, intends to phase out new petrol and diesel cars by 2032 or earlier, to decarbonise scheduled flights by 2040, and is committed to a cost-effective programme of railway electrification combined with battery and hydrogen technology. Despite these commitments, Scotland and the UK will need to go much further. Road transport is responsible for two-thirds of Scotland's transport emissions. We need a massive shift from private transport to public, shared and active travel. Instead of building new roads, we must make better use of our existing road capacity through demand management measures. The Scottish Parliament took an important step in the right direction last year by voting in favour of the workplace parking levy. But ultimately, there can be no sustainable transport system without road pricing. We need a total reformulation of transport pricing. How can it be cheaper to fly from London to Edinburgh than to catch the train? when emissions per passenger kilometre for air travel is six times that of rail travel. The failure of road taxation to cover externalities means that we overconsume our roads. The freeze in fuel duty since 2011 has caused 5% more traffic and additional 5 million tonnes of CO2 emissions, a quarter of a billion fewer bus journeys and 75 million fewer rail journeys. We need to reduce the need for travel. The pandemic has accelerated certain trends, such as more working from home, which should be harnessed. There's a powerful case for investing in broadband instead of building new roads. But this must go alongside a more efficient system for freight and logistics. Otherwise, growing internet shopping will bring our roads to a standstill. In nose to tail traffic, emissions from vehicles can increase up to fourfold. And the integration of sustainable transport with new housing will be essential if we are to avoid building in more congestion and pollution. Transport is the fastest growing source of global greenhouse gas emissions. The challenges we face in decarbonising transport in Scotland and the UK are replicated the world over. 
Next year, the eyes of the world will be on us. We must lead by example, by doing everything we can to reduce emissions from our most polluting sector.